Hi, thank you all so much for coming. Welcome to the Apple Store, to this fantastic space. It's really, I just adore this place. What an acoustic as well. Um, welcome, I'm Sarah Willis. I play the horn at the Berlin Philharmonic, and uh, I thought I'd bring my horn today because with Henrik, you never know. He's really into sounds and experimenting, and I thought, okay, I'd just like to bring it with me, and we'll see, see if we can persuade him to to have a quick listen to this. But we're actually here to meet the musician, to meet Henrik Schwartz. The most wonderful thing about music for me is that there's always something new to learn. And uh, for me as classical nerdy horn player, um, to research about Henrik, to find out, to listen to his music, um, to find out what, what he's all about was totally fascinating because I must admit, the techno clubs are really not quite my thing. It's a little bit too loud for us. But we're going to be talking about that later. Um, so I was really happy when uh, Apple asked if, we, if I would, I would uh, chair this discussion. And it's going to be a real discussion talking about his music, my music, and uh, how these two worlds can come together. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Henrik Schwartz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Hello. welcome. So you see, I brought my horn. It's a good decoration, but you never know. Maybe I can persuade you to. Maybe yeah, I can show looks you nicer some. Nicer than my computer. <laughs> 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 Henrik, welcome. Um, it's totally fascinating to meet you. I've been really enjoying getting to know your music uh, online and listening to your to your new CD, Instruments. And you you have brought your music into into my world with this CD. You've put your music, which came from a computer. Well, came from your heart onto a computer. You you rewrote it all for classical musicians and made this incredible CD. H how did the idea come? Um, well, basically, I'm interested in crossing borders. Or um, yeah, uh, also what you said before that music doesn't have any limitations in any direction. And and I'm always interested in where can I put in which context can I put the computer, because this is my instrument in a way. And uh, through the last years, I have tried to experiment with the computer and other musicians. And uh, so the orchestra was somehow missing so you on mean the you list. Were, with so other musicians, you were sampling their sounds and yeah. then using that to create, create more Not music. Not only just sampling, but also playing together. Uh, for me, it's very important to, to have a performance on stage together. I think that's... Uh, that makes a difference in a way, and and also the computer can it can add a new sound even to acoustic instruments. With the computer, it's it's almost I'm a little almost a little bit uh, jealous of this because when you press the button, it, it it comes out exactly what you wanted. With a horn, we call it in German a Glückspirale, which is means uh, well a sort of a, a lucky guess so that what we blow in this end is not necessarily what comes out. So. <laughs> So it must have been a totally different experience for you hearing your music played by live musicians. Yes, I was struggling with that problem too, because uh, what I had in mind was uh, not always what I heard back from the instruments uh, in the first place. And it has been quite a long way to get the notes right, to get um, the music written in the right way, so that you get a result that is... Um, yeah, what I was looking for. And of course, this music that was the source, the source was electronic music. Um, that's nothing that a classical musician usually uh, sees in front of him uh, on sheet. How did so you even put it onto a sheet? Because I, 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 I'm sure a lot of you have heard the CD. Uh, when I heard it for the first time, I just kept thinking, Gosh, how do they know where to play? Because uh, you, the techno, the house music, it's 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 very, it's quite minimalist, isn't it? it yes. It, it's, the same thing happens for a long time. Yes. And it's in it's in in your pieces on the CD as well. And and there's always different people coming in. You had a conductor, you told me, which helps usually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if he gives the right cue. And um, what were the challenges that the mu that the musicians, the classical musicians, had with the music? Um, I think the biggest challenge was um, for me in the first place to get rid of the drums because they usually are the, the um, most important element in electronic music or electronic dance music at least. And at some point in the process I thought, let's get rid of the drums Why? because they, it sounded cheesy to me. Um, we, we had a, a rehearsal um, at a very early stage of the project where there were still drums involved and uh, 
And I thought, no, this is not, somehow they don't fit together. And, um, were, they, were they electronic uh, drums? Did you put the sampler in there or did you have live? Half and half. There was a real drummer, but, but he was uh, playing um, electronic drums uh, and acoustic drums at the same time. But it wasn't... Um, I was looking for something more abstract. Uh, and I wanted to get it away from this dance floor, in a way. And um, also, what I think today is that the drums always put music in a certain time frame. And uh, because when you hear something on radio, it's if you hear, listen to the drums, then you can say, so this is from the 70s, this is from the 80s, or from the 90s. And if you put the drums away, it gets much more difficult uh, to actually find out when was this music made. And this is something that I found very, very interesting um, to put all that away and just have the classic instruments and so you don't know really when this was recorded or um, this it somehow puts the music into another place. People who know your yeah. music though recognize it because I recognized also some of the stuff um, that, that I'd been watching on live, uh, online um, that, 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 that had had a beat all the time and then all of a sudden to hear it done by strings and, and you have a really cool bass clarinet player. I mean yes. this guy, whoever, or girl, I don't know who played the cl bass clarinet but th that was basically the, that's a techno player. Unbelievable. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> but it's a fantastic instrument too so it, it can do many things. It can be very very strong and it can be fast um, so yeah, it's one of my favorite how did you choose? instruments. How did you choose the instruments for, for instru How did you choose the instruments for instruments? Um, <laughs> it started with the computer again. Um, I did a kind of a simulation on the computer, so like a computer orchestra, uh, just to get a, a first idea of how several parts could sound and and what maybe could work, what will be a solo instrument, and and so this is how it started and. So I was experimenting with sounds. Do you have favorite instruments? Well, the, yeah, the bass clarinet is really something that uh, I really like. The bassoon also. Um, um, I just started uh, to work with horns. So, um, <laughs> He's not just saying see. that uh, just for today. <laughs> let's true. see where this is going. It can be the horn can be ex incredibly powerful. This is something that that I'm. Uh, fascinated by but for me it's a very new world and uh and as i was looking for new sound so this is exactly what i was looking for there's all those new there's no sounds. horn on the cd though um there is uh, no horn no on the, next, on the next on the next CD, one yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah have you heard that promise yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so i mean it's it, it's a fascinating thing for me as a classical musician well for one thing as i said at the introduction your music's a little loud for us. It's, it's incredibly cool. I feel like uh, a friend of mine said um, just before I came here, she said, what? You're interviewing Henrik Schwartz? Well, no matter what you do, you can't be as cool as him. So, well, thanks. Um, but it's true, you know, we, we, I feel like a little nerdy classical musician. It is a totally different world, this dance world and this electronic music. Um, but uh, the fact that we can bring it together is, is good for both genres maybe, but it is out. Am I allowed to ask a nerdy question? How do you manage to do a two-hour set? Do you wear earplugs? No, but um, I mean, I can. I like it loud. So, <laughs> um, but you have to keep the balance. So I think it's not going to work when you have it loud all the time. It's it's nice to have it loud for two, three hours. You calm um, people down during your sets and then build it all back up again. It might be loud during my set right. and, and also then afterwards and before, but when, I, when I'm outside of the club, I try to um, relax the ears because I think that's very important to, otherwise you, yeah, you just damage yourself. And, <laughs> I and sit in front of the percussion yeah. section in my orchestra. Yeah, so. I think it's even louder than, yeah. than what is around me. We love it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also sitting downwind of a horn player, you know, our principal horn, he's Certainly, I, I can hear hear better in, th in this year than in this one because this one gets all the horn sound right now. And the, the orchestra can be very loud too. Very. So, yeah. we, we've had actually people there uh, recording decibel levels, whether it's allowed to even even work at this mm -hmm. decibel level. But I guess they never did that with you. They do all <laughs> they the time. Do? Yes, really? Of course. Yes, um, it's very important. Many many clubs um, have the meter in front of you, and you can't wow. go above. 102 or three, um, they take care, of course, that you don't damage anybody's ear. It's very important. 
Really? Yes, of course. So I could go to a club and it would, I would, don't have to be afraid of it? No. Okay. But would, would your fan base, would they come to a concert? What would they be afraid of? Lovers of electronic music, would they be afraid to come to a concert? No, they, they might be uh, afraid of not hearing um, something that they were looking for, probably. So, um, I don't know. Um, they might be afraid of not uh, knowing what's going on. Um, because that's, that's, as part of this project, um, I, I, I listen to a lot of classical music. I went to concerts, I spoke to a lot of musicians. Um, and I, even if I was really interested, I found it very difficult to to get into this world, which seems to be somehow locked. Uh, and it's very difficult to get in, and I think this is what probably um, listeners, young listeners, electronic listeners, um, they might want to get in, and then you, if you just go to a random concert, you just don't know what's happening. And That makes me really so sad much, to hear. There's so much music, <laughs> yeah. and it's so difficult to, to get into it. So and what can we do? What can we do in our classical music world? Um, Projects like yours? Hopefully, this is a tiny little step uh, into the right direction. I mean, we talk now, um, I, that's good. Um, that's also a step. I find it very important because what I found is there is so much incredible classical music, um, but it's, from my perspective, it's, it's strangely curated in an, in an orchestral evening because it's somehow made, it seems for me from outside, it seems it's, it's made for a, a, an audience that doesn't really want to be like, kicked in the ass. Yeah, and, <laughs> but there is so great compositions that do that. And, uh, and what I've heard in, in, in uh, uh, concert nights was very um, beautiful stuff, of course. But you didn't feel kicked in the ass? Sometimes not, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yes, okay. sometimes more than I was expecting, and that was that were, were the moments when, when I was really blown away. And what I know from electronic listeners is that they, they are used to extreme sounds, so you can, you can play but crazy you said, stuff. And, but you said you know. that, that in the classical concert, if you're if the electronic fans uh, come to a concert, they don't know what to expect. But do you know what to expect in the electronic music? Is it it's maybe, I mean, techno is, is basically 4-4 four, four time the whole time. It doesn't change into a waltz or into it doesn't, it stays the same yeah. um, beat. Uh, but you still don't know what to expect. All of a sudden, I was watching your, your set at a, at a Berlin club and, you know, even you don't know what to expect. You're making it up, uh, you're feeling it as you go along. Yes, um, yeah, I, I'm reacting to what the audience does in a way and, and maybe also sometimes like put a spark into the, into the dance floor and see what happens and sometimes it goes right. Um, and, but I think it's also maybe the other way around. If, if somebody who knows classical music goes into, into the club it will You'll be usually difficult. find them it standing will be difficult like that. For them too. So, <laughs> but but I strongly believe that that um, there's a lot of potential at the moment um, in in the combination of what we do and what you do. So um, and that's for me. It's just at the starting point. Um, there's a lot to explore. Are there any classical composers which have have influenced influenced your musical development? Like 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 especially for for, for this project. Um, not really influenced, but... but or favorites. Uh, yeah, there's definitely favorites. Um, I was going back in time, so I started today and, and went backwards. I didn't start in the uh, early days and, and went into today. So I'm now at around 1900. Oh, you've got quite a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Uh, but I know that... Um, Oh, this is something I have found for myself that I'm very interest, interested in the music that has been written between 1900 and 1950. So, um, yeah, Strauss I really like, and Ravel I really like, and uh, um, yeah, and we just spoke about it, uh, uh, Thomas Ades, or how do you say it? Thomas so, Ades. Ades, um, I was super impressed. Tom, by. Thomas Ades is a British composer, um, and when Sir Simon Rattle uh, came to the Berlin Philharmonic in 2002, 
was it 2002, 2003? Um, anyway, uh, quite a while ago, his inaugural concert included Mahler's Fifth Symphony and Thomas Addis' Asylum. And Thomas Addis wrote this piece. He was influenced by techno clubs yeah. in London. And we didn't have any, any beats. It was all literally just the orchestra. And you can imagine what, what we thought at the first rehearsal. We just thought, okay, what is this? And we absolutely loved it. I mean, yeah, I, I thought it yeah. was fantastic music. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and it was typical of Sir Simon bringing something so unknown and so experimental um, to Berlin, but that, that's, what, that's what he's been, been famous for. But you, you, loved, you heard the piece and you loved it. Yes, I was, um, I was blown away because I, I, didn't, um, I didn't know him and I was just listening to it and I heard so much uh, of electronic music in this acoustic music and uh, uh, would you call it classical music? This is something that it's 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 I don't know it's played by classical musicians, yeah. which is sometimes a good thing, sometimes not a good thing, because we don't quite have that edgy rhythm um, exactly, yeah. that needed to play that sort of music. But uh, Thomas knows the orchestra very well and and could write very cleverly uh, to get the uh, to get us playing what he wanted and to get that really. But it was difficult sound. too, because really this is difficult. something I experienced that the rhythm, because I have rhythm in my music in my acoustic music too, and it's very, very important that, that it's played very accurate. But, um, and, and if only from 50 people, only five don't join the rest, then somehow everything falls into pieces and, and yeah. it doesn't sound good. So you ever heard the Rite of Spring go wrong at the end? Yeah. The, the big piece by Stravinsky, the yeah. Rite of Spring. If one person is out at the end of that piece, the whole thing collapses. So I know exactly what you mean, but yeah. how did that work in the recordings with the Tokyo, Se Tokyo Secret Orchestra? It's such a Why are they secret? Because um, <laughs> nobody knows them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do uh, now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they do um, now. So, um, what were the rehearsals like? That? Did you sit in the rehearsals just think, oh no? Or sometimes yes. It must have um, really. F it was difficult stuff. It was very difficult um, uh, because I didn't know. In the beginning, I just I didn't know how to write for orchestra. I didn't know anything when I started. And uh, can you can you can I ask you? Can you read music? Um, when I started, I didn't, um, but now I, I learned something. I'm still too slow. Tell for, me about horn transposition. Yeah. No, that, that's for I've the next. I've heard of that. that. <laughs> yeah, but um, I also um, I, I talk to people who know how it works, and I think that's very important. And to because this is something you can't do alone. This is mm. also something I found out. Um, you need people around you that help you because there's so many peop uh, musicians sitting in the orchestra and, and everybody needs something else. And, uh, and I came from outside and I thought, okay, so that's, let's see what happens. Um, and I, I didn't have fear um, because I thought, yeah, if it's going wrong, it's going wrong. And so it was a big thing to, to write the music on paper. That was one big step, and then sitting there and having all those people around you with all those questions, and, and then they played it first for the first time, and I thought, oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> never no. going to work. Uh, um, and then they, they played another piece, which was what music, and that was, um, and this just worked. They, they put the sheets in front of them, and they were playing, and it sounded like I wanted it to be and so that was the moment when I thought okay yeah it's it was, it was probably a little bit slower the piece the, the, the it's, it's always the fast it's long, yeah, stuff the fast that, rhythms yeah that we what's have, the problem yeah if I only knew it, we just we just ain't got no rhythm no it's it's <laughs> it's a it's, it's a motoric thing I don't know it, it, they're unusual rhythms for us you know we if it that that that, that yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not what we are classically trained. I wish we, we could, but uh, it's not what we're trained to do. Um, so it, to get that edginess, especially in Germany, you know, in Germany, uh, an orchestra, a conductor does this, and the orchestra plays, bah. So they play Even like behind really yeah. behind it. An yeah. American orchestra will go, bah. Ah. So you would have probably found it easier to play with an American orchestra. They play directly on the beat. We play about half an hour behind the beat, but it sounds really nice. So if you've got something, yeah, if but you've this got is something, something I, I this is something I, I don't understand. <laughs> How can you watch someone who does this and then you do da like, uh, um, like half a beat later? Yeah, it's I, when difficult. I when I joined the Berlin Philharmonic, someone told me he said 
don't watch, just feel. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and it was Claudio Abado. And, <laughs> Should be okay. and I had not got a clue where to play, really, literally. Yeah. He went, mm, and the, everyone around me went, bah. But I was always the first, at the, the first, the first, at the beginning, always the first. And it's something that a big body of musicians can just feel. Uh, it's really hard to explain, but it's wonderful. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it's wonderful. And, um, but if it's something rhythmical, Simon often says, so Simon, he says, okay, no, today we're not going to be German, we're going to play on the beat. And, uh, and we, with Asyla, for example, we, we really had to do that. Ah, you were, you we were really playing. had to do ah, that. But that's interesting, because Otherwise this is something would have been lost. that they need to do with my stuff too. And I was always, I always saw that, that uh, the movements, I, I learned the movements of the conductor too, to understand what's happening. And, uh, and I was, yeah, I just saw and heard that they were playing behind. And for me, it, this doesn't work as a concept. So, so I wonder, where is this coming from? You, you Why could, does it happen? Uh, it's, it's a tradition of an orchestra. Um, every orchestra has its different. That, that's the wonderful thing about music. No one thing is ever the same. And uh, um, uh, the, 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 the Staatsoper here, they play a different uh, feeling than our orchestra, and you just have to get used to how that works. The smaller the ensemble, the easier it is yeah. uh, to say, no, we play right here. And with you, when you don't have a conductor, it's almost easier because you breathe. Um, but in the very fast uh, rhythmical music, it, it's, it, it's hard. But the conductor can insist on playing playing with the beat if the conductor's good then then it sh should be no problem but your mm -hmm. music's hard to play that's for, what i found, found out too <laughs> so yeah, yeah did you did you have any regrets did you think oh man no, i'm gonna stick to my stick to my laptop no um because um i was actually fascinated by by it being so difficult um because um for all the years that i do music i have this slave which is the computer which does what I ask him to do immediately, uh, and um, well, we try. We just can't always promise that yeah, it happens. Yeah, no, but um, <laughs> and and then I got into this in this uh, rehearsal situation with forty people, and um, some of them loved the music and they were totally into it. And then there were a few who obviously didn't like it too much. And so you have those, and then even some who probably don't feel the rhythm at all. So they try hard, but they don't get into it. And then there's all these things happening at the same time. And, and you're trying to get it under control. And for me, this was, in the beginning, it was difficult and I was frustrated. But, but then after a while, I was in, this, in these discussions with all those musicians. And, and I thought, yeah, this is fantastic. You fight to, to get something done. And, and there's so much uh, uh, human drama involved in... in and I loved it. So <laughs> it's, it's, it was, yeah, That's and still do. It's, it's very special. One thing you can do next time you have an orchestra project is watch people's feet. I always find this very fascinating in an orchestra because everyone's playing more or less the same rhythm, but everybody's foot is going at a different time. Everybody feels the rhythm somehow differently. We try not to do this too much on a stage. Youth orchestras, you see them you yeah. know, really tapping. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's also, I find, quite hard to sit still to your music. I was listening to it, and it, it's not the sort of music uh, I would like to lie in bed and read a newspaper and relax to. It, it's moving music. Um, yeah, that's what it's made for, basically. And uh, um, but still, I was interested in what happens when it gets transferred, because um, I I didn't want to make cover versions of the original electronic tracks. Um, so I didn't want that the orchestra tries to sound like electronic techno music. So you didn't want the orchestra to play on, on just the, no the their notes, but you had your track, your beats in there. That, that would be more like just a, just a cover that every yeah, everyone's done covers. Yeah, I wasn't interested in that. I was okay. really thinking about what would be, would it be interesting if I, with my electronic perspective, um, write something for orchestra? How would it sound? And, and as a helper for myself, in a way, I, I used um, tracks that I had made before uh, because I've, I felt kind of safe using them because I knew they work and um, and I knew how to play with them and so that was the starting point. So so in a way, of course, it's still the result is still kind of dance musicish, but but it's more peaceful than a, than 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 the original tracks. Yeah. It's, it's it's a little bit more and it, they also don't last as long. 
yeah, yeah. and I think it's a different energy. I think every every piece is now it's very different than the original piece. Yeah. yeah. If, do you have any favorites? Um, what do you think works works the best? I have a favorite. I like the last track with the bass clarinet, the cool, the cool. Mm, I like that one too. Yeah. Uh, that's maybe my second favorite. Um, the favorite is Marvin because I thought that it sounds like a weird piece of acoustic music, and uh, and I thought I haven't heard something like that before. So it's it's it has um, it has a lot of room in a way. There's space, and um, yeah, and somehow I thought this is something new f for even from my perspective it's something new and also the last one i exist because of you um it has it's it's it has this shaking energy which is um it, it's a similar energy to the original one but um but somehow <laughs> different and i i can't really say what it really is but but i i think there's a lot of energy also in the orchestra version and and I like that. Yeah, I, I love that one. I, mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're all great. What do you think? What else do you think we can do to combine the two worlds, as you say, without getting cheesy? Um, what, what else uh, have you got planned apart from a CD only with horn and samplers? I mean, for me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for me, a next step would be uh, scaling down everything a bit, uh, maybe write, maybe writing something new for a string quartet because I think that's probably the highest or the most difficult thing you can do. The string quartet can do anything, um, and, uh, but I find it very, very difficult to write something special. Uh, but probably that's f four instruments that... that uh, four is easier to control than 50 or even more. So, oh, you know, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking at the moment, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, so this is something I'm thinking about, or what I was thinking about would be um, if I would select classical works like a DJ. And um, also what we do is, in electronic music, is we do edits. And that is that means we take a track or piece and we take out the parts that we like, and then we cut them together and loop them and make our own arrangement. So you in prepare a way. that before you do a, a live set or you, you have or do you have a, a data bank of all your favorite bits? That uh, you not when I play live, okay. no, but, but that would be something that I would be interested in um, doing, just selecting uh, classical works and cutting them and editing them and then make something like a mix, like a one or two hour mix out of it and then and then have an orchestra play that. So with beats or without? Without beats. Because you remember that they hooked on feet. classic thingy, sort of all this, is, they've done all that, they put yeah, Beethoven to, to, drums. to rock drums. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people bought it. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's but many so people who like it, I don't. So. Yeah. But on the other hand, you must say that people learn about, the, they know the big tunes because of these, these mixtures, these crossover things. They think, oh, you know, they recognize that. Beethoven's Night Symphony, we, we know that. Yes. So they're, they're, there's good and bad out of, out of, all, out of all these, these experiments. It's just finding one that works also for, for musicians because we don't like to just play, you know, you feel like you spent 10,000 hours in a practice room and then you're asked to go, but, or, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's or worse. Ah, okay, and some, yeah. there's some music that I've played some pieces where I didn't play one single note. I just go and, and made noises on my horn. You think, okay, this is not what I trained for. On the other hand... So that would be contemporary classical music. Contemporary, yes. Or, yeah. yeah. On the other hand, who knows what Mozart would have come up with? You know, it, it, what's modern today um, might have been in, in, in 50 years, it might be, it might seem like you, you just don't know. So we've just got to keep trying. And that's why I really, really appreciate people like you who, who, uh, who go out and do these, these projects, because I think music needs it, not only your music, but our, our music too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, I also believe it's very, very important we, we talk and play together um, uh, and try out new things. Uh, but what I can say now, after three years of working uh, on that album, it's really, really difficult to get into the classical world. Not only that um, you might not know what you need to know, but also... Um, do you think that's a problem? What do you mean, like not knowing when to clap or not knowing when to... People have said to me they're scared to go to concerts because they don't know when to clap. 
I just said, well, clap wherever you want. It's fine with me. But uh, not everybody thinks like that. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe that's some old kind of uh, cliche that 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 people would fear to clap when they. But then you just wait until everybody claps, so that works. So <laughs> that's so what, okay. So what do you mean that they they don't know what they need to know? They don't understand the pieces, or? Um, I think it's a matter of selection. Um, what? Um, what is being played on the night? Because if you if you are interested and then you go to a concert and you don't know nothing and and then you might if you are lucky you hear a good piece uh, that blows your mind and and then you come back. But I think very often you go away and you're like, hmm, I don't get it. So um, I think what would work is maybe a curated night that is. Yeah, where the music is selected by someone who is somehow connected to the people you want to bring to the concert hall. So, um, how about a concert? Maybe get an orchestra on stage and then ask the audience, "What would you like to hear tonight?" That would be a little bit dangerous, but uh, you never know what you they might want get to the hear. same results probably. Then, yeah, it's actually on <laughs> yeah. The, yeah you, you get the hits. Yeah. And, um, but that's exactly what I think that um, the hits are not so interesting. Of course, there, uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, Beethoven, fantastic stuff. But even if you're not interested in classical music, you have heard that, uh, and many other things too. So, um, but what about all the rest? There's so much more to to discover, and um, and it probably could help to have one night in a month where you know he, that's dif different. Than, yeah. um, than the rest, so something like that. I well, don't know. I'm just always really yeah. interested to, to, to hear what other musicians think about that because it's a passion of mine to communicate how great classical music is and uh, it's hard sometimes, but, uh, but what, how could you communicate your passion? Uh, how could you get us into your club? Um, through my work uh, with this album, um, I've, I've met many, many musicians who go to the club. They for them, it's natural. They um, they do that. I'm coming. I don't. I Can don't I come? have to ask them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Can I come? Yeah. I'd be really interested in asking the audience um, if anyone has any questions. We'd love to hear them. If you have any suggestions, how we can combine the two two worlds. If you have any questions about the the CD, usually now that's a total silence. Everyone just looks around to see if anybody else has it. Um, I've asked lots of questions. Otherwise, do you 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 are allowed to ask more questions. But is there anything? Anything you guys would like to, to know about Henrik, about his work? Oh, thank you so much, you've <laughs> saved us. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, thank you for all this whole thing. <laughs> and I would, I would be interested where you think your way is going. Where Are you more concentrating on the classical thing or trying to combine everything? But is this only or just about you? Are you also trying to yeah, go with Trilog or Swa Schwarzman? Or what, um, what's the future? <laughs> Well, um, it's all happening at the same time, in a way, and uh, somehow I have the feeling I can, I can do crazy things at the moment. That's, that's the feeling I have, and, and I think it's also important that, that it's uh, happening. Yeah? So, so I'm trying out things. Um, that's what I've always done, and at the moment I've, I have the possibilities to knock on on uh, orchestra doors and, and they open a tiny little bit. So um, <laughs> I find that interesting because um, my quest is in a way to, to see what can, what can I do with my instrument, which is the computer. So um, where can I put it and what happens if I do that? Uh, and at the moment, I believe that for me, now after 15 years of making electronic music, um, I find it very interesting to have acoustic instruments as a source um, and then put them into the computer and twist them and, and see what happens. Or the other way around, create something, write notes out of it, uh, give it to um, fantastic players and then record that again and, and bounce back and forth. So this is something I'm very interested in at the moment and because I believe that's... I search for something new, and um, and that's going to be the path always, probably. So it, sometimes it goes wrong, but <laughs> that's that's okay. Thanks. Great question.
Oh, it's a photographer standing up. I thought it was someone asking a question. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, it's always the same. Then, then all of a sudden, one minute before the very end, everyone does this. But uh, um, if there aren't any more questions, then no. Sad. No. Okay. No more questions. I have a thousand questions, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to go uh, out to a bar to answer all my questions. But it's been absolutely fascinating meeting you, and thank you so, so much. And uh, I, I, I hope the world is going to really enjoy your music. I'm going to enjoy uh, telling people about it, and I hope that we can have some more collaborations between our between our two music genres, because be it's, great. Uh, yeah, yeah. it will be really exactly. great. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I have another question. I have a question. Would you like to see Henrik live in action? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and would you like to see Sarah in action? <laughs> <laughs> because when, um, when we, we had a, a telephone date and decided to uh, met over the phone and said, OK, what could we could do? What could we do? And I just suddenly thought I would really like to see what you can make from these sounds. And you've been collecting musician, you've, you've been collecting live music yep. sounds. And I told Henrik a story about when I was, I was studying at Music College in London and a, a, a famous uh, music uh, synthesizer maker came to us and said to the student, said, uh, we'll pay you 50 pounds if you come to our studio and play four octaves of a scale and we'll record it for our synthesizer. So we, we students thought, great, a lot of money. So we did that and we went back to college and we got in such trouble from the musicians, from the professionals, from our teachers, from the members of the orchestra said, how could you do that? This is like 20 years ago. How could you do that? You're ruining live music and, and, uh, and you're taking away our jobs because you're giving the synthesizers. But you said something very interesting about synthesizers. You said actually nothing's happened really since it, the, in the last, last years that there's been In the last five years, I would say that there hasn't been much development in... in uh in electronic uh, synthesizer or plugins, plug-in synthesizer, or let's say sounds, yeah, new sounds, because uh, techno has always been about new technology and and working with new technology. And since around five years, I would say there hasn't been a new synthesis or something. Um, nothing really new, and and that's also why I go into. Uh, another direction to, to get another source to, to create new sounds. So you're doing something, so I don't um, have to feel bad. I didn't take anybody's jobs away all those days ago, no. uh, all those years ago. But today, if I play for you um, just some horn sounds and you're, you can create a, a track out of it, I think, I mean, it, uh, I couldn't feel more cool. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> proud. <laughs> okay, so what do we need? I have my horn, where's your instrument? Yes, it's over there. Great, let's set it up. When you're sampling an instrument, what do you usually get them to do? Um, when I start, I usually let the player play and see what they what they give. Yeah, and that's always a good start, I think, because um, they they can do so many things that I know don't know anything about, and uh, so I just record and then I play around and throw it back at the musician, and then 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 you see what happens, uh, and and sometimes you get. And this is what I'm actually looking for. Sometimes you get these very, very special lines by, by probably changing the one, changing the rhythm, um, pitching the sound into another place or layering. And then by weird things that happen in here, you create a, a melody that is really interesting and that a human being usually never would play. And um, and I think that's something that, that I find very interesting. You get those new melodies that, that you wouldn't get out of your head. Um, and if you then somehow try to extract that melody, write it down, and then play it again, then you have something that, that, that might be special. And that's what I'm looking for. Because I'm a, I'm a, a classically trained horn player, and that means I can't improvise to save my life. Yeah. Um, we just, we're just, we're terrible at it, at least I am. Um, so if I was just gonna, I played you a few things earlier on and you, you, you made a little data bank of, of some sounds that the horn makes. So if I just played you a couple of notes to start off with, or would you rather have a, a, some sort of, of melody? Some single notes are good, different ones, and okay. then, um, and then you could play a solo over it. I can record that and okay. let me see. Yeah. Okay. 
That was one we played. What we had before. Yeah. Shall I show them what, what, how we made that sound? Yeah. That's, look how we made that sound. It's literally all horn. Okay, I won't talk now because otherwise you get my voice in the mix. Okay. Yeah. Ready to go? Like a little lip trill, a little. Um, yeah. Where did that come from? That's yeah, all to you. Yeah. So.
that me? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That was, I mean, it's just to look over and see what's going on. It's, it's, it's magic. It really is. It's like, uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I don't understand any of what you're doing, but you transposed. I don't too. You turned yeah. around, you, you squashed, you, yeah. you extended, um, and you made a whole piece out of just one little horn player. Yeah, and usually you do that for um, two, three hours, and then, and then um, things come up, and then you decide what is really special and what is just random. <laughs> and, uh, and then you can make up a piece out of this. And, and this is something I, I find interesting. And uh, so from the pitching, and so as a sec next step, I would think about so how many horns do I need to actually play something like that? And um, so this is a an in, in very interesting way for me at the moment to... to to get new sounds. It's totally fascinating and very, very special. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you that I was allowed to play <laughs> Thank you. for you. Thank you all for coming. And this will be available as a podcast so we can watch it again and again. And uh, thank you, Henrik. It was fascinating. And we're going to continue this uh, horn experiment, I hope. Yes, please. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>